Hello, everybody. Okay, so I hope that y'all can see me. I can see me. Uh, if you cannot hear me or cannot see me, please just post in to the chat so I can make sure I got everything working. Uh, so I'm going to be trying to do a whole lot of things here um, at the same time. Okay, great. All right, there's my assistant, Emily. She is in the chat. Thank you, Emily. Okay, so let's get started. Um, my name is Robin Marie Smith, and I am a mixed media creative. I've been creating since I was a kid. And about 20 years ago, I decided to make it more of a business. And so I kind of took the hobby and turned it into more of a business. And I've been doing a lot of things related to that for about 20 years, which, gosh, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, found rubber stamping, found scrapbooking back in the early days, back in the 90s. Um, I know a lot of us kind of maybe came into mixed media that way. Um, and then I discovered art journaling and journaling in general, and that was like all she wrote. So I have been exploring and enjoying that um, for many, many years. So thank you for joining me today. And there will be a replay, so I just want to make sure everybody knows there's going to be a replay. And so I see everybody's kind of saying hello. Please let us know where you are from. If you're a nester, please let us know. Say nester, hello. Um, I know I already see a few names in here uh, of those of you that I know are, are already in the Robin's Nest. Um, this is a live that is in celebration of the doors opening for my creative community. And I'll talk a little bit about that at the end if you're interested in learning more. But this call is about uh, making a junk journal. So the thing I want to start with is two things. One, if you have questions, uh, please post them in the chat. My assistant Emily is in there and she's going to be monitoring that. Um, please put a cue or the word question before it and it'll make it a whole lot easier for us to find them. And then um, she will be posting links of anything that I might mention. Um, I'm kind of anticipating there might be questions for those things and so she'll be posting those. Those will also be added into the replay under the description. So if some reason you miss something or whatever, don't panic. Those will all be put into the replay so that you'll have that as well. You can just access that at any time and find those. All right, yay, I see some nesters in here. Yay, hello, hello. I'm so glad you guys came out to support um, support me and be a part of this, so I'm really excited. I have to tell you guys, honestly, like full disclosure here, going live makes me nervous. Um, I can do film and record, but doing lives, it's, it makes me nervous. And so the more I practice, I know the more comfortable I'm going to get, but I get all the butterflies, and maybe that's a good thing, I don't know. But it was like, okay, I'm all ready to go, and then it's like, no, I got to run to the bathroom again. Like, okay, I'm nervous, right? But I know you guys are going to just enjoy this. I'm excited to be able to create with you guys today. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a very simple and very easy junk journal. So what I'm going to start with is that, and then I'll show you some of the supplies I'm going to use. I know that some of you reached out and were like, <laughs> don't be nervous. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> I am nervous. I'm always nervous uh, to see what supplies I'm going to use. And I'm really keeping this super basic and super simple because there's a lot of different ways to make junk journals. And for this, I just wanted to do something super easy and super simple. But let me show you a few of the supplies. And then I'm going to show you two different junk journals. Um, one that I've had in my in my life called DJ. A lot of you guys know DJ. Um, and then the one that we're going to kind of take off of today and create today. And I'm going to talk about papers and I'm going to talk about the way that I store them. So I get a lot of questions about that. So we'll talk about that too. But let's go ahead and go to, um, let's go ahead and go to some of the supplies. Basic stuff. So um, a book all, which is basically a paper piercer. This is just what you use to poke the holes uh, for your book binding. And then probably a pair of scissors if I end up needing those. And then I have, these are relatively large book binding needles. And I especially like these are by Lineco. And I know that Emily will put a link in the chat for these because I've been asked about these really big needles. And then wax linen thread. And this, there's different brands. I tend to like the Lineco. They are kind of a book making, book binding company. And then I might use a glue stick depending on how things go. And I just have some thread. This is pearl cotton. And then I have a needle, uh, embroidery needle. I'm going to save these in case I have time to do a little bit of embellishing on the cover. So I have those in here just in case I end up needing those. And those of you that follow me know that I'm a huge snacker while I'm creating. And I have the snack of the day. I always like to talk about what the snack of the day is. So the snack of the day, 
Um, I can't pronounce any of this. Uh, they're these praline chocolate truffles. And they're super, super delicious. I got these for Christmas. And I've eaten all the coffee ones out of it. So now I'm working down from the flavors that I like down to the not so I'm not sure flavors. So that's the snack of the day. I don't know if you guys have snacks, but I love to find out and hear what you guys like to snack on while you're creating. All right, let's dive in. The first thing I'm going to show you is DJ. DJ is basically a, a dictionary. So DJ stands for Dictionary Journal. And this has five signature, one, two, three, four, five, five signatures. And basically I took uh, the pages out of a dictionary and then I added in all of the new pages that I wanted to add. This is actually from a course that I have called Salvage Journal. And I've been adding to this and filling this for years. This um, is kind of a typical uh, junk journal. It's kind of big and bulky and heavy and I have some smaller ones that are like this but the one that I want to show you today is going to be um, a lot easier to make and also more portable. Like you could just throw this in a, a zipper pouch, you could throw it into a backpack or your purse or whatever and just take it with you and it's super light. Basically it's all made of paper. That's it. Just papers. And I know <laughs> all of you that are mixed media artists have papers. We have lots of papers. Now, this particular one, I also want to say, um, some of you may have already heard of Junk Journal January. And Junk Journal January is going on right now. And my date for my lesson or my video is the 28th of January. So I think that's next, uh, this Sunday, I believe. And it goes live at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And Emily will put the link in the chat. And she's also going to share with you the link to all of the, the playlist for all the past ones. So if you've missed it or you didn't even know about it, you can go back and you can watch. So this, this is actually the journal I'll work in in that particular lesson. I do a fast forward video at the beginning of me kind of putting this together. And then the page that I'm actually doing um, is this one here because my theme is grunge, which is perfect. So this is basically just all these different sizes and different types of papers um, that I like to, and that's kind of typical of a junk journal. Some people do junk journals with um, more of a just plain papers and then they kind of add into it or they just use more like um, maybe like junk mail or different things maybe from books or whatever. I like to do an assortment of different things. So I've been kind of working in this one already um, but this is what um, I'm going to show you today. So before we get started on that I want to also share with you about paper and how I store the papers. Now, I have been asked that a million times and over the years, I've tried to keep them organized by color, by size, and just in all different ways and it just never sticks. <laughs> I just still end up just putting them in things and then just dumping them out and using them. But I do have a few that I are organized that I wanted to show you. So I have this, it's a wood, um, it reminds me of like a card catalog box. I think that's probably what this was. And I like to put my vintage envelopes and like letters and different things in here. So they're really easy to just kind of grab. And it's kind of the perfect size for um, envelopes and stuff. Now I also have, um, this is a metal, um, I think this is a swim basket. I remember in Growing up, we used to go to the swimming pool like every day in the summer. And this is, I think, one of those baskets. And so this one, I can just kind of thumb through. These, I usually put most of my painted papers, um, things that I've kind of made more. I like to have those kind of right there. And those are a little, this is a little bit more organized. And then I have the hot mess basket, which is just a basket. And I'll just dig through here. And sometimes I just pull a big stash of them out and I just put them on the table and I just kind of thumb through them. So not very organized, but that's kind of how I do it. <laughs> and then for smaller papers, I will change it up a little bit and I like to organize some of them in like tins um, or even like zipper pouches where if I want to take things with, um, they're more portable. So I can kind of almost like go through some of my favorites and put those all together. And then I'll use those and I'll use these kinds of things because it just makes it easier to travel with. So any questions so far about paper? Um, I am gonna jump right in here and start talking about the papers that we're gonna use today and then um, give you an idea of some of my categories and kind of how I look for papers. Um, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be looking for questions. Okay, so it looks like we're good. Okay. So one of the categories that I look for, and I'm gonna pull from these papers today to create the journal that we're gonna make. So I will often use, this isn't paper, but it's fabric. And so it's got some 
it's got just acrylic paint, just scraps of fabric that I have. Sometimes I like to put a page in it that's not paper and just something a little bit different. And then I kind of go with more of like neutrals. This is what I kind of consider neutrals. They can be things from books. They can be eco dyed papers, but they're more of a natural or kind of black and white in different types of papers too. Like this is tracing paper that's been painted. Um, this is just scrapbook paper or uh, sketchbook paper. Vellum is also really nice. I like to use that sometimes. This is more of a heavy cardstock. I think this might even be watercolor paper, paper bags. Uh, school paper, just ruled school paper. You can find this like at a dollar discount store, especially when school starts. Um, these are envelopes. And then I recently did a tutorial on doing neutrals because sometimes I'll, I'll be, I have lots of color, but I didn't have enough neutrals. And um, that tutorial is on, uh, is free. You can, uh, Emily will put the link in there and you guys can come check this out if you haven't already. So basically it's just using simple, uh, you know, white, black, brown. I did coffee to kind of stain these papers up. And I always like having these neutrals in my stash so that I have them when I want to use them. Now, somebody had asked me recently when they did that, well, what do you do with the papers? Like, do you, do you seal them? Cause some of these vintage papers are kind of, um, fragile. You can put clear gesso on them, or you can even put matte medium on them or like a spray fixative. You can use a cheap hairspray that also works too. Um, and then just some bigger pages here that I have. So these are more of my, like my neutrals, things that I just like to have in the stash in case I ever want to use them. And then I'll pull from these to actually create um, my journal. So I'm just gonna, I'm just looking at some of these and going, all right, I like that, I like that. And I'm just gonna put those aside. Um, also, I like to have another pile that's kind of, I say vintage, but they can be like old letters. Uh, they can be blueprints. I don't know where I got this, but I absolutely love it. Um, old letters, just weird stuff, ledger papers. Uh, let's see. I think I like this one. So I'm going to pull that one out. Um, these are really, these are from old typing. These are, this is old typing paper and look at that tape that's on there. I just love that. Um, this is, I think this is like a, I say butcher paper, but I don't even know for sure. And then vellum, old envelopes. And then sometimes, oh, this is drafting paper. And then sometimes I'll even just randomly stitch things. And then that way it's kind of done and ready when I want to use them. So here's just some more vintage papers. Just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what you can use. This is something, I think these are drafting papers. If you ever find drafting papers, those are really cool. All right. And then for those of you that maybe don't have access to some of the vintage. I like to use this actually specifically to paint on. This is by Sugar Boo and it's a paper tablet that has quotes on it, but it's ruled and it's kind of vintagey stained looking. And it's, it's, I, I absolutely love this. So this is something that you could kind of substitute if you don't have access to, um, to vintage papers. All right. So the next category is going to be papers that I've, I've either painted or um, other things that have color or more like patterns. So this is a soap wrapper. These are awesome to just put in and use as a page. Your own art may be scanned and printed. That's what this is. And then this should have been in the other pile. And this is one of those pages from the Sugar Boo that I have actually inked up. And so I save these. Any art that you maybe just random stuff that you actually I painted these when I was with um, Wendy Brightbill last year. We were hanging out and I just was, she does gorgeous flowers. And so I just kind of was like, all right, I think I'm gonna do some of those. Um, any other types of art? Here's some just stuff that I painted. Um, here's some eco dyed paper. That's kind of pretty, let's use that one. And then just more inked paper. I like that too. And then anything like this is just cardstock watercolor paper, I think with acrylic. This is like an old, I don't know what this is, collage thing I did. I'm gonna take that out. So this is the other pile where I can pull from to get more like um, colored things. All right, and then lastly is things that you would grab from like books, magazines, things like that. And then I have some books to recommend as well because I, I do have some, some favorites that I love. Okay, let's, uh, I'm just going to show you some of these that I kind of pulled. These are from either books or magazines. This is a, 
an anthropology bag that I cut. And I love these little metal things. I think I'm going to use that. This is from another book. This is, I don't know, it's a cover of a book, of a like a magazine. You got uh, any cyanotype papers, anything that you could kind of create. That probably might have gone better and painted. Um, anything from books or magazines. Um, sometimes I go shiny, sometimes I don't. Yeah, these are just a bunch of different things that I have. So let's talk about some of those books. I recently discovered this one. It's called uh, Country Living Modern Rustic, and it's got matte paper, but oh my goodness, there's some good stuff in this one. So I haven't even looked at this one fully yet, but I'm planning on it. This is my latest favorite for collage paper. It's the it's called Collage Soup, but this is my favorite one, this Abstraction Menagerie. And the way that this is done is there's a lot of color, and then there's like black and white on the back. So I'll pull some of these out and use these as well. This is just a phenomenal collection, I like this one, of paper um, that they have like 28 different books, so a lot to choose from. And then these two are by Seibel Court, and these are, some of these are hard to find. You kind of have to get them at... Um, second hand like and this one's got some vellum in it so I'm gonna I like this vellum text so I'm gonna take that out but it's got some beautiful work in it and then this one here is called Nomad and it's got some beautiful papers and things in it as well now as far as magazines Bella Grace some of you probably have heard of Bella Grace this one's really nice too great for taking found words out of it as well and nice matte paper and then lastly, my probably my most favorite is Blossom by Amy Butler. And it just, it has some gorgeous florals and colors and things in it. So I pull a lot of things from books and magazines. And if I absolutely love it, I'll just get a second one. So I don't, you know, I have one for my coffee table or whatever. So, all right. So those are the books that I wanted to share with you. And then the process that I go through is just, I start pulling out a pile of after I kind of go through and see what it is I'm liking and then it's just a matter of really folding so I'm gonna start with this stack here I was kind of pulling these out while I was going at it so I'm gonna fold these and look and see if there's any questions the collage book is called um, it's the company is called collage soup and then my favorite one is this abstraction menagerie they there's like 28 of them and the paper is really nice for collaging and for tearing up so um, and then these are just book papers and so I just kind of find assortment of what interests me and then I just start folding them this one I had stitched on so I think that one's going to be kind of cool I just use my sewing machine I think this one this was a heavy heavier cardstock so this might work well for the cover so I'm, I'm thinking maybe for the cover and then I have some other papers. So I'm just going to fold these. And I'm going to look at questions while I'm doing this. Uh, vintage papers. Um, I get a lot of those at flea markets. You can find some of them on um, eBay and on Etsy as well. Um, eBay, prob it, you know, it's one of those things where it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes they have a lot that, and then sometimes they don't. Painting and marking on both sides of the paper. I think it depends on the paper, how thin the paper is. But because I'm using this now as like the starting point, so let me find, where did I put the one? Here we go. So like for instance, this one that I started with, like for instance, this is this here is just painted deli paper. You can kind of hear it, I just folded it in half. But of course that's gonna kind of not necessarily bleed through, but that's deli paper and it didn't quite bleed through. But I plan on going back into these and I will end up painting over, collaging, mostly collaging over these pages. This is actually under paper that was just on the surface of my work table and collecting the ink and stuff. So I think it depends on the paper that you're using, but I don't really worry about that as I'm constructing because I'm going to go in. Now these pages here I've already worked on, they don't even necessarily look exactly like they did when I started. Like these are, you know, I've already started kind of working in this. So um, I don't really think about, I guess, both sides. Um, I'm looking for questions. Okay, I'm still folding here as we go. All right, so if you guys are following along, I think it's just a matter of finding some papers that you like in your stash and kind of folding those. All right, I'm looking to make sure, did you, do you sometimes leave a page untouched? Sometimes I will leave parts of it maybe, 
Um, or, for instance, if I like something like maybe this is a good example. Like maybe I really just like that splash of black and white. I may just leave this and then maybe just do the back or maybe just do part of it and let some of it show. Most of the time it is probably just a little bit of it peeking through, but most of the time um, it just depends. Like some of these, I, I will just go over all of these, but there might be some in here that have parts that I just really like and I don't really wanna cover those up. This was kind of a generic one. Yeah, I've already started working in this. And this is fabric, this was painted fabric, and I don't know, I might just leave this or come in later and maybe stitch a little something, maybe hand stitch something on that. So I haven't really decided. Um, okay, so I'm gonna use this fabric as well. Um, I'm just looking here for questions. All right, I'm still folding. And black, I love like black and white text and then even just solid black. So I just like having a, con a bunch of different contrasts in there. So. Um, I think this, this is an envelope. This is just one of those six by nine mailing envelopes. So I try to look and see if right. I got some neutrals here. I got some color. I might add in more. And then of course, how big do I want it? Like how thick do I want it? That all depends. Um, but I am planning to, sh I'll share this with you guys. I am planning to work in this journal at some point during the hundred day project. Um, which they announced today starts February 18th for those of you that are interested. The 100 Day Project is a global project that anybody can join it. It's free. You don't even really sign up for it. And you just pick a theme or you pick a project that you want to work on for 100 days. And you just do that creative thing for 100 days. And then you can post it if you want to share it. Um, it's really your project. You can kind of do whatever you want. Okay, so I think we're getting good on these pages. Any questions at all on that? Those stitch papers are amazing. Yeah, this is just, um, I just ran this through a sewing machine and I will, let me bring out my sewing machine and I will just show you guys. Super easy to do. Let's say I wanna do this maybe and I just wanna stitch on the side of that. It's kinda of hard to show you the sewing machine cause it's, I don't have a camera that's set on the sewing machine but I just set it as a straight stitch and I will, I don't use a special needle. I just use an, just an all purpose needle and I have black thread in my sewing machine right now. And then I'll just, um, I'll just do like a straight stitch. You can turn it as you're sewing if you want to do that. And then I'll lift it out and then I'll leave some of the strings so that I end up with lots of little strings. And so I'll maybe do two or three passes. And you can just do this if you have a sewing machine. Just do this on a bunch of random papers and then you'll have some already done for when you wanna use them in something. You know, I could fold this and use this. This could be like a little, could be tucked into an envelope in there. So that's all I do really to do the stitching part. My um, sewing machine is a brother. I actually had one, a brother for, I don't know, forever. And it finally just, I had to get a new one. You know, it costs about as much to maintain one as you go get it fixed than it does to buy a new one. So it was time to buy a new one. All right. So I hope that answered that question. Yes. Hand stitching. Love that. My pleasure, Tina. I'm happy to have you guys with me today. And I know some of you are probably just watching and we'll come back later and play. Some of you are following along. I need to slow down. I talk too fast. All right, I'm just making sure, see if there's any other questions. Um, okay, I think we're good. All right, I'm gonna keep going. So now I just kind of get all these things, I fold them up and then I'll start looking and seeing kind of how I want to organize them. And I definitely think I wanna use this assortment and I also like to do them where the pages hang out. So probably at the top and then definitely on the side and at the bottom. So let's see here. So then I just start sandwiching them together or as we really call it, nesting them together. That's what a signature is, is when you put these and you just nest these all together. And I'm making it as one signature. So this will only have uh, one that'll be stitched together, so. Um, I don't know. Let's put this one in here. So I just start placing them down into a pleasing arrangement. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I like that one as much. 
let's see, maybe put that one on the outside. And I just, I like to have, like I said, some of the stuff sticking out at the top and the bottom. All right, so let's put this one in here. And you can also do it too where they're not, where they're stacked at different um, orientations, like, you know, up here at the top, maybe I'll do that one there. And then I'll do one a little bit lower. So they don't have to be all lined up like here. For those of you that are new to this, this is kind of, you know, you do whatever you want. It's very, very messy, very fun, very flexible. All right, so let's put this black one in here. And oh, I love this one. This is that one I had stitched already. So let's put that one, let's put that one in there. And I like that because I can have part of that stick out at the top where that was folded. This is good. Let's put that one there. And so I just start folding them and placing them together until I get a, an arrangement that I like. Oh, let's put the fabric. Maybe we'll put the fabric here. That's a little more wonky to work with, but I like it. All right, let's put that up there. Okay, let's see if there's any questions. Um, yes, Jenny, she, she'll put those... Um, uh, Emily will put the links in and also we will make sure everything's posted. Yes, everything will be posted in the description as well for you guys. So if you miss it, don't worry, we're going to post everything in there as well. All right, so you can see here, I'm just kind of staggering these. I'm like this one, I like when I open this, I want to see these kind of offset. Oh, I forgot the black one. Let's see, let's go in, let's maybe put that one here. Oh, I still have some more papers. Okay, let's put this one here. Um, and I see Fanny, if we can translate, um, Emily, I think you can probably translate that question for us. Thank you. Okay, let's see, how does that look? I'm liking that. Okay, and then I had this, I'm thinking I did this, this is just a, a very messy collage thing. I think I did this on poster board. But I think this might work for a cover. So let's see. And see now if I do it this way, it really covers up a lot of what I've done. And I don't really want to do that. But if I do it this way, then I can still see. I like that. And then part of that quote is showing there. Okay, so let's see. All right, so I'm just going to put a clip on here. No, I'm sorry. I don't know where I got these clips. I've had them forever. <laughs> I get asked that a lot too. All right, I'm just looking to see if there's any question. Um, oh, no subtitles. Um, actually, I did try that and it did not allow that for subtitles. Um, I don't know why. Um, YouTube did not allow me to do it. However, um, I'll be able to upload the subtitles after. Um, I just have to download the file and create the subtitles and upload it. I think it's because um, the way that I'm doing this is that there's what's called... Um, I guess you could call a delay, but if I had the subtitles for some reason, there would be a really long delay between when I was talking and when you heard me, and I prefer to have it less time. So I will I will add them when um, the video is over. So I'm, I am sorry about that. Um, okay. Okay, what are we doing now? All right, so let's take a look at this and let's get out some of our tools here. Any, any questions at all about, oh, actually, this doesn't look very good. Actually, I think I'll fold that. That's a little too long. Um, any questions at all so far about what I've done? What is your page limit? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I'm thinking it depends on how thick they are too, um, but I don't know how many I did. Let's see, there's the cover. Some of these papers are relatively thin. I, I think this is a good number. Um, let me see how many is in this one because that's a good question. I got the cover, fabric, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is really thin, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's like 13 in this one, and it's going to be fine as I continue to work in it. It'll get a little bit thick and chunky, but I think that's a good number. So maybe somewhere between 10 and 15. And again, it depends on how thick um, your papers are. Like this is really, really thick. And then I've got some that are like that vellum, it's super thin. But that's a good question. Okay, so I've got my wax thread. Yes, Sydney, that's one of the things I like about doing it too is when you've got the um, the variation. 
of different colors and patterns and things. I think it makes it more interesting when you go to work in it and kind of create in it. Um, again, so this is wax thread for those of you that might have come in a little bit later. Um, this is book binding thread. And then I have a book binding needle and I've already thread this. And so um, what I'm going to do and let me grab some. I forgot to get my big jumbo paper clips for this. Uh, let me grab those. Okay, so these are amazing to have for book binding. They're just enormous paper clips. I did forget about these. And so what I do, find the center and I'll put, it's a little awkward because of the way the papers is. I, I don't like to measure and I certainly just, I like to just make it easy and messy. So I put one clip on this side and then I put another clip on this side. And so now this will kind of hold the pages in and really a smaller paper clip. You can use um, close pins and things, but this reaches in a lot further. And that is something I really like. And I have found these to be super helpful. Okay. So I'm just making sure everything is tucked. This is kind of thick because of that cover I have, but now what I'm going to do, we're going to do, I'll do a three hole. That'll be easy. So I'm going to use my all, um, you're live. Oh, great, Angie, welcome. There will be a replay, guys, for those of you that came a little bit late. Um, so the all, so I'm gonna just find, I'm just gonna eyeball what I think is about the center, and then I'm gonna poke it through, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna twist it gently, and I'm also gonna be very careful not to put my finger there. And so there's my first one. Now, if you find that you are, it's easier for you to kind of put the needle through and keep that hole there than you can, um, I'm not going to do that in this. You can even put a little clip on the end of it. Once you put it in, you can put a little clip here. These are just little sewing clips and that kind of helps you keep it in place. This is only a three hole, so it's probably not going to be that difficult. Now for this one, I'm just going to, I don't know, find like halfway between here and halfway between the end and just go ahead and do another one. Again, I, I like to close it because then I know it's coming right out in that spine. And then I'll do the third one, same thing, making sure everything's tight and then go in and poke the hole. All right, now we're gonna sew it. All right, now for this thread, this wax thread, it's not doubled. There's a little, I don't know how, what the proper term is, but there's a little tail up here at the top. So you're gonna, I prefer to start on the inside, but you can start on the outside. If you wanna have your threads on the outside for, maybe beads or anything, you can do that. I just like to go on the inside. So I'm gonna start at the inside and I'm gonna go down to the outside and I am gonna leave a tail on the inside here. And my thread, I forgot to mention, what I'll normally do measuring is three times the height, which is more than enough thread. All right, so now we're on the outside and I'm just gonna leave and I like to leave a nice long tail on the inside so I don't lose my threads. All right, so now we're on the outside and we're in the center. It doesn't matter which hole you go up through, just pick one, doesn't matter. And if you need to re-put your all through just to kind of make sure you can still see it, you can do that and then just poke that hole right through from the outside. Now you're on the inside. And what you wanna do as well is when you're tightening you want to go in the direction that you're sewing. So we went this way. So I'm going to pull that this direction to make sure that it's tight. Now, the next step is we're going to, I call this the bypass stitch. We're going to bypass this stitch and we're going to go down to the, uh, this hole, sorry, and go down to the other hole. Oh, I'm sorry, Fanny. I, I will do what I can to get those subtitles, but I think I'll have to check with YouTube to see if they'll even convert it into a different language. I don't know, but they would not let me put the subtitles on here when I did this live. Okay, so now we're on the outside and we're gonna come up through the middle. So we're on the outside, we're gonna come up through the middle. And if you need to poke a hole, and kind of make your hole a little bit bigger, you can do that. And then this come up right through that. Now, this is the thing I always like to mention is when I was talking about that bypass stitch, 
this I call that the bypass stitch. So you want to make sure when you tie this off that one of them is on one side and the other is on the other side. And then just double knot it. So double knot and then you can trim it. Um, I usually just trim it eh, just about that much. So kind of right in there. Okay, so that's that. So now we kind of have, and I folded this, but I'm gonna, I might just tear that off. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I could even stitch that and then put, make it a pocket, but all right. Now we have the basic structure of this. Um, the wax thread, I think this is, I think it's a three ply, but honestly, I've had these for so long and I don't have the packaging, so I can't remember, um, Emma, how much that is, but I do have, um, it is Lineco, but there's a tons of different brands that you can get. Um, six is probably too thick. I think like a three maybe or two. Um, anyway, I have the link for that too, because I do like to buy it in a package where I have several different um, colors that I can choose from. Okay, so what are we, how are we doing on time? Okay, we got time. So now what I want to do is I just want to do a little bit to the cover to jazz it up a little bit, but I don't always like do that right away. But let's look at this and then we'll do a little bit on the cover. Now you'll notice I folded this one, but I left it. I might stitch this later, maybe hand stitch it, maybe put a little piece of fabric around it and make a pocket out of it. Um, and so right now, as you go through it, you can see, it, it. to me it's very pleasing to see the variation. You could put little fibers through that. The variation of colors and textures all the way through this. I just love that, okay. So what I have, and I'm going to mention this because the 100 Day Project, if y'all know me, this is my eighth year getting ready to do it. And what I'm going to do is called 100 Days of Wishing Threads. So I'm basically going to make these little, they're stitched with paper and fabric and other doodads and different things. And I'm going to put quotes on them. There's like found words on these. So I have some pieces here that I thought maybe I could pull from and maybe embellish the cover with this. And what I think I'm going to do as well is maybe every so many days to share with you what I've done. I may end up working in this journal, maybe like do a page every 10 days or every 12 days with my little wishing thread. So you can maybe follow along and watch my progress on actually creating in this. And see, now that I've said that out loud, <laughs> I almost like have to do it, right? I don't, another live, right? A 10 of them actually. All right, so let's take a look at this. Oh, and I was thinking, I, I said this earlier that I really liked this. So maybe, maybe we put this on here. I kind of like that right there. All right, let's glue that down. And I like the extra stitching that's on it. So that's another reason why I like to have things in my stash that are kind of ready to go. And then I don't have to really think about it too much. So let's, um, this is a Pritt glue stick. I used to be a Yoohoo girl until my good friend Claire, who's in England, got me hooked on these. Um, they smell nice and they are super sticky which is great for me in Florida because it's very humid. And so these are my new favorites. All right, so I'm gonna just put that on there. I'm just gonna leave this kind of open to me deciding what I wanna do with that later. Okay, so let's take a look at this now. Um, Emma says, the ones I was looking at were varying between, oh, the millimeters, yeah, see, and I don't know how that translates. Yeah, I can look that up though and find out on the ones that I know that I use because I use that brand, what the uh, the metric is on that. Okay, oh, and then I also had this sitting here too because I've got these little pieces of fabric. This is an old um, hanky, an old linen hanky. I've been saving these forever, like decades. And I just painted it with some white acrylic so it's kind of crunchy. And I love this little piece that's torn. So I think it needs, between the paper and this sewing machine stitching, this fabric with this, and then maybe even a little bit of um, one of these, this would kind of add some more, and then I could put a word on here too. 
so I like having these little things in my stash as well. All right, I think this might be a little too long, so let's tear this. And I don't really want to cover that, so maybe down here. Yeah, let's just glue it down. I don't want to overthink it. So let's put that maybe right there. And I think I might kind of wrinkle it up a little bit. I know, Beth. I get asked about this clip a lot. I have no idea where I got it. It was like at a gift shop. <laughs> I get asked about that clip a whole bunch. Okay, so now that's glued on. And how cool is that? That these old hankies have, they're very sheer. And so when I use them, it's very transparent-ish. Um, but I did, I do like wrinkling it to give it some texture. And then of course the paint, and I'm going to leave this little thing hanging. I think I don't want to, I love that. That was just, I had torn a piece off of it. And then this is part of one of my little wishing threads and it says far and wide. And because it's got the pink, I think that's a nice match. Maybe I do like that little spot, but I think that maybe I'll put it there. Okay. So let's just glue it down. All right, so we're gonna glue that down. And if you do any um, hand, like slow stitching, you could do little bits of these and then have them when you're ready to play. Now see, that just looks great. I don't really think it needs a whole lot more, but I did wanna show you one other thing and then I'll start taking some more questions. Wishing pieces, did you back them with something? Um, these are actually done on, give me a second. I gotta find it, here it is. It's called um, Solvi paper. It's a water soluble stabilizer. And basically it's just paper. And so I just stitched them on that and then you soak it in water and then it removes the paper. And then you're left with wherever you have these gaps is that dissolves away. And then you're, with, you're left with that. So I'm gonna do a hundred of these for the 100 day project. I'm super excited about this. Okay. Oh, I wanted to show you one other thing. Um, let's see here. I did mention, oh, here it is. Like using vellum. Let's take this piece. Actually, I'm saying vellum, but this is actually, if you guys can find it, it's heavy tracing paper, heavy, heavy tracing paper. And it's about as thick as vellum, which I love. So anyway, if you can't find vellum, you can always use heavy tracing paper. What I wanted to do, I was playing, I was looking at this one earlier and this, in this one, I took this piece of vellum, folded it over, and then I put some ribbon, uh, sorry ribbon in it. So let's do that with this one too. So I'm just gonna go to a page, probably, maybe this one here. I like this, but let's, let's maybe, let's maybe put this on there. Um, I think I'll do that. All right, so let's, and it's translucent, so you can still see the black through it, and I'm just gonna make it stick out a little bit, and then just glue that down. So just a little, I mean, there's all kinds of different things. You just kinda, as you play, you discover. Okay. All right, more glue on the back. Okay, and then I have some of, as I said, it's Sari, S-A-R-I, ribbon. I just, you can get this. I get most of mine off of Etsy. There's some really nice vendors on Etsy. And let's do a hole punch. You could even stitch this if you wanted to beforehand, or you could stitch it onto something and then you could glue it on. So you could still get your stitchy look. You would just do it and then stick it on there. So let's put this on there so we can have a little bit of pink at the top, kind of like in this color. Since my other one's mostly green, I kind of like the way this one's coming along. Okay, and then let's trim it. All right, and then let's take a look. Now look at that. That's good. I like that. Yes, I rather like how that turned out. So now we have a little bit. So just like the littlest of things can really make the difference. And this plays in nicely with the texture, the ribbon, the vellum, paper, tracing paper. It's very crunchy. And so now this is ready for me to create in for my 100 day project. This isn't my 100 day project, but I'm going to incorporate about every 10 days, I'm gonna use one of my wishing threads and work in it. And I, if you would like to join me on that journey, I'd love to have you join me on that journey because um, I'll be sharing that. In years past, I always did like a show and tell, but now I'm gonna do a show and tell and actually probably create some stuff while we're doing it, so. 
All right, that's it. How did we do? Oh, good, we're good on time. All right, I'm gonna look for questions. Make sure I don't miss anybody. Um, ah, la, la, la. Okay, I don't see any that I haven't answered. Emily, if there's any I haven't answered, just post those in there for me. So um, I wanna make sure I answer questions and then I will tell you a little bit about the Robin's Nest for those of you that um, are interested in learning more. It is my monthly creative community. I know there's nesters in here. Emily, thank you. You're welcome. Anne Marie, thank you. Awesome, awesome. All right, I'm going to keep an eye on for questions, but let me run through and give you a little bit of information about um, the Robin's Nest. So it's a monthly community, it's a creative community. Uh, we have lots of things going on in it. We I like to say that it's very, um, it's very casual, very low pressure, very cozy. That's a great way to describe it. That's really what um, what I like to say. Um, okay, Emily, thank you. If we've missed any, hopefully they'll post those in there and I'll catch those before. Yes, welcome, Vicki. I saw that. Yes. Is there a video I'm creating? No, there is not. Um, I haven't even like started even doing this yet. So this is like I've been this is what I believe I'm going to end up doing for my um, I have been asked about like just general sewing machine, like how to use it, how to what to use with it and stuff. So I've got that come. There's so many things. Um, so let's take a look at some of the things we have in there. Um, there's a new creative lesson every month um, and it's not huge. Um, sometimes it's a little project. Um, sometimes it's a um, like a technique. We had, um, let me show you, there is a journal in there that's called the Nest Journal. And this is one that's all hand stitched. Everything is hand stitched in this. Um, this was kind of what we did at the very beginning and it's there. There's a lot of slow stitching on this one. Um, you get to pick. You can pick and choose the things that you want to participate in and what you want to do. Um, and the lessons don't build. So there's not like, oh, if I missed three, then I'm lost. It's not like that. And all of my art courses, all of them that you would get individually outside of it are in there. So if maybe there's a month you're like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that, or I just want to dive in and do something different, you can do that. And we also have live monthly play dates. And those are a lot of fun. Um, do, do, do. We can only join, the, yes, it ends, the registration is open, the doors are open until the end of this month. They close on the 31st and they'll open again in May. So it'll be at least that much time. We also have monthly mail art swaps. And as a member, when I do put handmade items, you'll have first access to those in my shop. Um, we have monthly member spotlights. We really do have a warm, supportive community. And it's $24 a month and it's there's no commitment so if you decide after three or four months you're like i don't have time or i'm not i don't want to continue whatever reason you can just you can unsubs unsubscribe or cancel there's no pressure to um, you don't have to commit to anything it's just month by month and again the doors do close on the 31st and they'll open again in may all right i'm just going to throw up a few testimonials because i've got some awesome nesters in there um, and i wanted to make sure if there's any questions that i don't miss those Thank you, Angela. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And again, there will be a replay on that. And Emily will post the link to the nest for anybody who is interested. Um. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at another one. Oh, Miss Janet. Um, our community is very warm and welcoming and I absolutely love doing the lives with everybody. Thank you, Lisa. It's, it's definitely, um, it's really, it's just, I, I, I guess I'm biased, right? Because I love it. All right. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, I was wondering if the day you sign up is your billing date. Yes, that's correct. So it's not like beginning a month to end a month. So if you were to sign up today, it goes through the month and then you'll renew. It'll renew. What's today? The 24th. It'll renew at that. I don't know if it's the 24th or the 25th or because I know that some months have 31 days, but it's it's from the day you start. That's correct. Thanks, Emma. Emma is a very active member in the nest. She's in France and she always brings a lot to the group. I know there's others in here. I wasn't able to see everybody going through. Um, resources for this journal, the one that we did make, they will all be listed, Renee, in the um, description. As soon as the replay's up, YouTube has to process it and then I will 
it'll be in there. Those of you that signed up for this actually signed up to get the link and have gotten reminder emails. I will be sending out an email to you and you'll have, uh, you'll know when it's ready. So those of you will know. You're welcome, Tiff. Yes. Thank you everybody for joining me. Any questions at all? Is there anything else you want to see like, or had a question about anything that I showed? Um, these papers, let me show you these. Um, these papers here that I showed you guys, uh, let's see where they are. Now I do have a hot mess in here. Let me switch the camera over. This is the next month as in our what is it February yeah the, the February is going to be doing all of these and we're going to do foam stamps and use the foam stamps in um, creating all of these watercolor -y papers so that's going to be the February and again it changed every month there's something new so thank you Paula yep we'll be opening the doors and again up in May thank you yes thank you everybody I'm just looking through these Oh, thank you, Ellie. Yeah, I just hung some new lights. So I've got some new um, icicle lights in here. I did a little bit of cleaning here recently. I, I need to do that as I prepare for the 100 day project because 100 days is a long time and I like to kind of keep things without cleaning for 100 days. <laughs> uh, la la. Okay, any other questions? I'm here. I'm happy to answer if you want me to show you something, you have any question about anything. I had some on another call, we're asking about things behind me. <laughs> One of us spotted this little journal and I'm like, how do you even see that in the picture or in the video? But they were able to see it. So you're welcome, Anita. Thank you, Angie. Thanks, Chris. I'm glad you guys were all here. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, I will do more down the road. Uh, Anna, thank you. Where do we join? Okay, um, it, Emily will post that right now into the, um, the chat so you guys will have that. And then you can find out all of the information and all the details. Emily, are you still in here? All right. Your colorful papers, is there a tutorial in that? Yeah, these, the ones I just showed, um, these here, this is going to be, I'm calling these good and plenty painted papers. These are the, the watercolory papers. We, we are gonna, this is our February lesson. So we're gonna be doing this and we're also gonna incorporate foam stamps, foam stamps and make foam stamps too. So that is the February lesson. Um, you know, I think they do, Barbara, buy junk journals. There is a, a gal on Instagram. I can't think of her handle. Leslie Iverson, I believe is her name. And she makes beautiful ones, but they have like finished pages and stuff in them. They're, they're just beautiful, but I know she sells hers. Okay. All right. I'm going to give me just a second here and I'll pop the link in. I don't, I don't think Emily went anywhere, but let's just make sure. And I'll put the link to the Robin's nest in here and you can reach out with any questions that you might have. Um, all right. I'm looking to see any other questions. Yeah, it's actually on, um, it's the robinsnest.com. I just put the link in there. I'm loving your container and baskets and boxes. Yeah, I get those from all kinds of different places. Like I've got some, like you can get, like, as I said, I'm preparing for the 100 day project. So I've got a whole bunch of varying things. Here's like, I get this, I think I got, I think I got these at like the Dollar Tree. I don't remember. It was not, or maybe, maybe it was Target. And then we have a Home Goods, and so you can get, you know, I like these fabric-y ones um, because they're squishy. So there's all kinds of different ones. I'm trying to think of what else I have. And I have bowls. Um, I'll also use like pottery bowls. I like to put, these are alcohol inks. I like to put things in those. I like to vary things up. It makes me happy. Mugs, any of those kinds of things. Um, you're welcome, Melody. Thank you, glad you're here. Oh yes, I get asked about that. Those are drawers. Um, there, there's actually two of them and they're stacked on top of each other and they have these like little, they, it's kind of like a card catalog drawers. I got those at Home Goods like I don't know how long ago and I get asked about those a lot. Um, I'm afraid I'll, if, <laughs> Barbara says she'll be drowning in them. Oh, I know. I got I got a lot of them too. But yeah, I love them. Um, Target has great containers. Yep, in the dollar section. Absolutely. Yes. 
Okay. Emily said, oh, she thinks, oh, YouTube is, scam is spamming. Ah, oh, okay. I got you. Well, I just posted the link in there, so we're good. I was wondering where you disappeared to. That doesn't surprise me because you're posting only links that it's probably like, hey, um, they're a lot bigger than they looked. Yeah, because I'm kind of a ways away from, but they, I mean, they're kind of a, they're a good size. And I kind of store things. These are just like paint sticks and things that I don't use a lot but I want to have kind of where I can reach them. Um, what paper will be best to use? Um, what I'm going to do in the, and in, in, I'll tell you, I use most of the time for all my painting papers right now, I love inexpensive sketchbook paper. So I'm using, there's different kinds. I use these really big pads. Um, this is the one I like. It's Canson. But you can get these. I don't know if you can get this one in a smaller size. It's uh, 50 pound. And these are 18 by 24. And I just cut them down. Um, it's 74 grams. I think the next size up on this is 65 pound, which is nice. But I like the really thin paper. It's amazing how nice it is um, once it uh, dries. Give me a second and I'll bring some more over to show you guys. And we're also going to use those um, those sugar boo papers. So like these are the these are the exact ones we're doing in the February lesson. So the this is the paper cut down. So it's like half this size. So we're going to use this is an example that. And then here I've incorporated some foam stamps that we're going to make. And then here's one with you know on the bigger page. So sketch Canson sketchbook paper. 50 pound, but I, like I said, I prefer the bigger size just because I like to work really big and then cut things down. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, do, do, right now they'll do, think. Um, yes, they come in smaller sizes. Yeah, but there's two, there's a 65 pound and then there's the 50. I like the 50 because it's really, really thin. You're welcome, Pia. Any other questions? I'm happy to answer. If you see something, like I said, or you'd like to ask me a question about anything that I've used, I'm happy to help you with that. So just let me know. We've got some more time. So I'm here if you want to ask any questions. Yeah, let me show you these hangy ones I got. I think I got these from Target too. These are fun. I wish I could just take the camera and just like have it follow me around. These are kind of fun. I got these at the, they weren't a dollar. They were in the Target where the Target cheap section is. I think they might were $5, but they're really well made. And then I can hang these because you know, sometimes you're out of space and then you can hang and then they sit. So I can bring them over to the table. All right, Tracy, it was good hanging out with you again. Tracy and I and our friend Shay, we went to the flea market last weekend. I posted today a video, um, video one of four of some of the cool things I found. Do you ever do the five hole? Yes, I do. I did it today because I wanted to keep it really simple. It depends on the size. Let me find. Oh, here we go. So on this one, and don't please don't judge my stitching because I don't care that it's not straight. <laughs> I just do it wonky. So this one, because of the length, because of how big this was, um, I did a five hole. So there's there's five holes in this one, and it's more sturdy and supportive, especially when it's taller. So the one that we did today, now I'm starting to lose um, all my stuff here. Um, it's kind of, you know, not quite the length, um, but I think it'll work with three spread out. But yes, I do five when I have like a really tall spine. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yes, a studio tour. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, because um, when we do the live calls, one of the days I was at my my sister's house in Tennessee, we were in her she shed. And so we kind of did the call from there and she kind of gave us a tour and talked about her, her craft and the things that she, but that would be fun. I think that we do. I need... 
<laughs> jokingly. I just need to hire somebody just to follow me around and like help me. Cause I mean, I guess I could do a GoPro, but that I suppose I could try that. But yeah, I think that would be fun. And then I have travel plans coming up that maybe we'll be in another person's studio too. So that'll be a lot of fun. But we do. We have a good time on our calls. Um, all right. We got time. Anybody else have anything before we wrap up and say goodbye? I just want to make sure I answer any questions. I'm here. This is kind of what we do in our hangouts. I mean, I don't always teach in them. We just hang out and make stuff and talk. And I answer a ton of questions and we share. Um, all right. I don't see any more of the questions. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up if we don't have any more. Um, again, I will be creating in this for um, the 100 Day Project. Um, taking things and adding them in, the things I'm going to create. So I'd love to have you follow along. Um, off subject, would you happen to be Linda? No, I don't who I don't know who that is. No, nope. I'm the older sister in the pair. So um, no. Is it do I look like her? Maybe? Linda Lavins. Um not sure if I know who that is. <laughs> oh. I haven't seen that show in forever, so I don't know. Now I'm gonna have to go look it up. Oh my apron. Okay, so let me tell you about my apron. Yes, my apron is handmade. This is kind of my signature apron. Um, I made this. Um, it was from a template. Oh, ugh, I can't get it untied. And I love this apron because it has these strings that go through it to where I can adjust the height of it, but it's super thin, so it doesn't hurt my neck. And the this part and then the pockets, um, this is trim that I took off of an old J. Crew shirt way back when. And then I stitch those on. So I love my apron. Thank you, though. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, this was from, uh, I don't even remember when I made this, but I do love my apron. All right. You're welcome, Kim. All right. I get to stay longer. Super cute. Yes. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, Sydney. Yeah, it's super comfortable. And I got the um, pockets in it. It's very lightweight. I love the, po uh, the polka dots, too. Kind of goes with everything. Um, it's gotten a lot of paint on it, but I don't care. And then I just got this untied. Okay, so and then on the ends, I stitched a little bit of the pink from the shirt onto the ties at the end, too. Yeah, so those are on the back. All right. Okay, anything else? Anybody else want to ask any questions? Again, all the links, even if we couldn't post them in there because YouTube thought Emily was spamming, we'll put those in um, the replay. So, and again, if you were on the list getting the emails about this, um, I will send the email to you guys um, as soon as it's ready so you'll know. Um, anyone here from France, do they know where to get the Sugar Boo book for cheaper? Yeah, I, okay, I have no clue. Do you ever use tea bags in your junk journals? Yes, actually. Um, there was one year I was doing... Um, these 100 day project they were like collage painted and i incorporated like a tea bag into it and i recently received some tea bag paper like not just the tea bags but tea bag paper and so i'm going to start experimenting with that and soon hopefully we'll have some insight into using the tea bag paper because so i think you can use it like on jelly printing use just about everything on it Oh, I'm sad. I'm sorry they don't have it in France. What have you done for the past 100 day projects? Okay, so my first one, and you can see all of these on my website. Like I have every single year and everything I did is all on my website. Um, I did 100 days of anthropology stories, which was crazy because it was my first year. I not only took catalogs pages and I created these collages, but I made stories up around them. So I actually had two projects in one. I had the writing part and the art part. That was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I've done little mini collages. Um, I don't think I have, this was an example of one of those. They were all different, but they were just like little, little tiny bits of paper. Um, I did little booklet bundles of joy. That's a class, I ended up doing a class with all kinds of different papers that we did. And it's like when you open it, it's like a little bundle. I did, the tea bag collages, which was tea bags incorporated into. I did swatches one year, which I didn't like at all. That was not a good year. Um, I did these little, this is what I did last year. Oh, I don't know where the other little journal is. 
last year I did some journals, but I don't know where the other one is. This was, it kind of started out with these like little fabric books. They were like little, and then I did papers in them, but then it grew into a bigger project. But for some reason I can't find the other journal. So that was another year. I did, <laughs> what else did I do? How many years is that? I'm starting to forget. Yeah. Oh, and then I did these big paintings and then I cut them all down and then I put them on book covers and then did those. So I think that might be seven. Yeah. So this year is going to be a little easier. The project is going to be a little bit easier, but I absolutely love doing the 100 day project. Again, it starts on the February 18. You just pick whatever you want to do and you just do it for 100 days. Um, yeah, Kim, the, the, the lady that actually sent it to me is going to start selling it on Amazon because I didn't know where to get it, but she sent some to me and it's really nice. I mean, it's literally is tea bag paper. Yes, it's tea bag paper. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Anybody? Um, I think I got all the 100 day project pieces that I did. I think that I think I counted seven. The best thing is no rules. That's right. The 100 day project has no rules. Like you get to decide what you want to do. And I've even morphed it as the time's gone by into like shaped it where I was like, I'm not having fun. I need to tweak it. And I just tweak it. Um, I'll post if Emily can't put it in the chat here, I'll put it in the replay in the description. Um, I have a workbook and tracker. It's a free workbook and tracker. It's really, I have to say, I've got a lot of good feedback on it to help you pl plan and prepare, which is important. And then also just stay on track and and as you're doing something for 100 days, you learn things. Like I learned the year I did the big paintings and then cut them down. I, I realized I thought I wanted to explore painting big on canvas. So I started on paper instead. And I realized after doing that that I didn't like it. And so that just saved me a whole lot of headache. <laughs> it wasn't for me. I like smaller paper, more that, not canvas. And I decided I learned from that 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 was really a better option. So I learned from doing the 100-day project. So I could document those things in the workbook. And then what did I learn this week? What things did I, did I discover? And it's really cool to look back on that and read those later. So uh, yeah, beige and white coffee filters are good as well. Yes. And you can dye those too. Okay. What did you call the bits of paper sewn together? And do you have a video? Okay. I do not have a video. Um, but this is just, I called it my own thing. It's not like, that's not like the thing that it's called. Um, I'm going to call these, this is my 100 day project. Um, it's, I'm calling these 100 days of wishing threads. And there'll be like little word, found words and stitching. I actually learned this from Colleen Atara. Um, I don't know if she has a tutorial or a class on this, but um, I learned this from her when I was taking a, I did her retreat and learned how to do this um, on a bigger scale. These are the ones I did, like here's a bigger scale. These are the ones I actually did at her place. They are much, much larger. And then I'm just going to do mine smaller for the project. But I absolutely love these because then I can cut them down and use them in all kinds of things. And they literally can be a page in your journal. Here's an example. Uh, here's a couple examples of, let's see. I know I did them in here. Yeah, here's one where I just cut it down and then glued it on the page. So this is kind of what I'm going to do for the 100 day project. About every 10 days, I'll work in my journal that I made today and I'll do something, you know, pick my favorite and then work in the journal. So be really cool when it's done um, to see how that turns out. Okay. Um, during the 100 day project, we show how to do the wishing threads. Um, probably not. Um, I, again, I learned this from Colleen Atara, so I don't think so. Um, I'm going to have, I would, I could talk to her and just see what her thoughts are, but I probably not. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I loved your hundred days of swatch. <laughs> I think it was, I, I kind of did a hundred days of swatches my way. So it was like, I had a lot of freedom, but I just got kind of bored, you know, day 30, 40, 70, but thank you. Thank you. You know what I did with a lot of those? I've used them and cut them up and torn them up and used them. So it didn't go for not. I've just used them in my collage. Oh uh, yeah, actually, Anna, it's Colleen. She uses red thread. Yeah. Cause these are the ones I made um, at her place. Yeah. She uses these. And if you look, the thread is red. Yeah, she uses the red thread. Yeah, so it's Colleen is her name. 
Um, again, I don't know if she has a, oh, does she do it in the sa uh, tiny sacred journal class? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll put the link to that in the, um, the description. Um, yeah, Colleen's awesome. Yeah, she's, she's good people. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Anna. All right, anything else? I could stay here and chat longer, answer any questions. If you do create a junk journal and you do something with this, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you're doing. And um, yeah, so I can share some love with you. All right. If I don't see another question pop up, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, I don't know how long it'll take YouTube to process this, but. Um, oh, yeah, it was a tablet of paper. All right, hold on. My table is messy now. I'll show it to you. Well, it figures it'd be at the bottom of the pile. It's a tablet that looks like vintage paper. Um, I know that we posted the link earlier in the chat, but you might not be able to see it now. Oh, here it is. Okay, here it is. I'll show it to you. It's, um, it's just a tablet. And they have the, it looks like vintage paper and then it has quotes on the bottom. And I like to paint these and use these um, in my journal. The papers are really nice weight too. So I don't know if Emily can post the link to that or not, but okay. All right, I'm gonna call it a day. All right, thanks everybody for being here and joining me. I had a great time. I was nervous at first, but you get going and it, it's a lot of fun. All right. If, Marsha, if you signed up and you got an email with the link and I sent you a reminder, then you will get an email. If you're not on that list, then I don't know how to send you an email. So, Marsha, if you did sign up. Otherwise, if you didn't, just tune in like 24 hours, maybe by tomorrow, it'll be up and ready. Um, but it will be there. Same link. You just use the same link and it will be there. Uh, I just don't know how long YouTube takes to process, so... All right, and if you have any questions about the Robin's Nest, just reach out to me um, separate, and I'm happy to answer and share. All right, I'm gonna tune out now. Bye, everybody, I enjoyed it. Thanks for spending the day with me or the afternoon with me or wherever you are. Um, I sure appreciate you being here. Bye.